Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a recent video by financial analyst Rafi Farber, he delves into a crucial report from the New York Fed's Liberty Street Economics, dated December 19, 2023. The report, titled, Dropping Like a Stone, RRP Take Up in the Second Half of 2023, authored by Garrett Alfonso, Marcos Brioni, and Gabriela Spada, raises alarming concerns about the repo market dynamics. Farber highlights key points from the report, offering expert insights into the implications for the broader financial landscape. Farber begins by emphasizing the significance of the article and its authors, noting the date of the report, December 19, 2023. He then quotes a paragraph from the report that he deems crucial for understanding the current state of the repo market. The highlighted excerpt talks about the decrease in banks' balance sheet costs and the increase in the supply of bank debt, leading to a noticeable shift in interest rates for overnight treasury-backed repos since the fourth quarter of 2022. The heart of the matter lies in the positive rate differential between banks and broker-dealers borrowing via overnight treasury-backed repos and the overnight reverse repo rate. This leads money market funds away from investing in the overnight reverse repo facility and towards private repos. Farber introduces a chart illustrating the SOS FARO slash NRP spread, showcasing a positive trend. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Uh, this is from the New York Fed, uh, LibertyStreetEconomics.NewYorkFed.org. They even have like a subdomain. Look at that. Uh, the article was written December 19th, 2023, which is yesterday as I'm recording this, dropping like a stone on RRP take up in the second half of 2023 by Gara Alfonso, Marco Cipriani, and Gabriella Spada. They all sound Italian or something. Okay, the only paragraph that's worth sharing here is this one. I'm going to read it. And I'm going to show you the chart below. Consistent with a decrease in banks' balance sheet costs and an increase in the supply of bank debt, the interest rates at which banks and broker-dealers borrow via overnight treasury-backed repos have increased since the fourth quarter of 2022 and are now a few basis points above the overnight reverse repo rate C chart below. This positive rate differential pushes money market funds away from investing at the ONRRP facility, overnight reverse repo facility, and into private repos. Sorry if the sound quality wasn't so good at the beginning. I had the wrong microphone on. I think it's the right one now. So we have this chart going on right below which is the SOFR-ONRRP spread has been positive. SOFR is the o secured overnight financing rate minus the overnight reverse repo rate. The secured overnight financing rate is the repo market, and the reverse repo is the reverse repo rate, which is 5.3. That's an administered rate, whereas the secured overnight financing rate is market-based. And the SOFR, you might know, has replaced LIBOR as the basis for all derivative contracts in the world, which is like hundreds of quadrillions of dollars or whatever the number is, trillions, quadrillions, decillions, who cares? Uh, and we see here that the spread between the SOFR and the RRP is now positive, which means it's worth it for money market funds to not loan cash to the Fed through RRP, through reverse repos, and instead to loan cash to the repo market to other banks because they get more basis points out of that. So a far rate is 5.32, whereas the administered reverse repo rate is 5.30, and you'd rather have that two extra basis points. He breaks down the chart, explaining the significance of the positive spread between the secured overnight financing rate, so far, and the overnight reverse repo rate. This spread indicates that money market funds find it more lucrative to lend cash to the repo market instead of the Fed through reverse repos. The SOFR, replacing LIBOR as the basis for derivative contracts globally, plays a crucial role in understanding the shift in investment behavior. Farber notes the current SOFR rate at 5.32, compared to the administered reverse repo rate of 5.30. The two basis point difference prompts the question, why engage in reverse repos at all? To answer this, Farber delves into the dynamics of the secured overnight financing market, explaining the increased demand and average volume of approximately 1.7 trillion. He compares this to historical spikes and reverse repo rates, highlighting correlations with spikes in volume. So the question is, why are there reverse repos at all? 
First of all, let's look at the secured overnight financing rate. I've showed this chart before, uh, but we have increased take up, increased volume, this black line in secured overnight financing loans, which are basically repo loans. So we have increased demand there. And the, the average right now is about 1.7 trillion. And we have these spikes. And as I showed before, we tend to have spikes in the reverse repo rate, which is the blue line at around the time when we see a spike in volume. We saw this at the end of 2018 and here in the apocalypse when we reached a, a, a peak here of uh, 1.28 trillion. And then a few weeks later, we had the apocalypse over here in the blue line spike. And so we're seeing a spike in volume, but not yet a spike in repo rates yet. So why are there reverse repos at all? Well, we have two markets that are competing for funds. We have the treasury market, which is when the treasury sells T-bills on the primary market and market participants and money market funds invest in those. One month T-bills are now yielding 5.4%. Uh, secured overnight financing market, meaning banks that need extra cash to settle their books for the day, that is 5.32%. And the money that is neither demanded by the treasury nor by the overnight financing market by other banks, that leftover cash is lent to the Fed in reverse repos in exchange for 5.3%. The video transitions to an exploration of the competing markets for funds, the treasury market, and the secured overnight financing market. Farber explains how the leftover cash, neither demanded by the treasury nor by the overnight financing market, is lent to the Fed through reverse repos. This sets the stage for understanding where reverse repo money has been flowing towards the treasury and the repo market. As the volume in the secured overnight financing market rises to 1.71 to 1.8 trillion, Farber predicts a potential tug of war between banks needing cash to settle their books and the treasury demanding more funds to finance its debt. He paints a scenario where, when there's no more money in the reverse repo facility, a critical moment occurs. This moment, Farber argues, signals a climax in the tug of war, resulting in the repo market losing ground to the treasury's demands. So where has the reverse repo money been going? It's been going in two directions. In one direction, it goes to the treasury, which sells debt and money market funds invest in that debt and less in reverse repos. In the other direction, it's going to the repo market to banks that need cash to settle their books. And it looks like more and more banks need cash to settle their books because the volume in the secured overnight financing market is rising now to 1.7, 1.8 trillion. And so what happens when there's no more money in the reverse repo facility? That means that all of the extra cash is being lent to the repo market in the SOFR and to the treasury in the treasury bill market issuance. So when there is no more extra money, that means there is a tug of war between banks that need cash to settle their books for the day, their cash short, and the treasury, which demands more and more money to finance its debt and to bomb Ukraine or whatever else they're doing and to bother me here in Israel by sending ships over and causing World War III and all the other stuff that they shouldn't be doing. So when this tug of war comes to a climax, one party loses and it's always the repo market because the treasury gets what the treasury wants. And when the repo market loses and falls into the mud, that's when the Federal Reserve has to come in and provide the extra cash to the repo market so the banks don't go kaput. But just like this tug of war happened in September of 2019, it is going to happen again. And when it does, the Fed is going to step in and we will be in the final round of inflation, which will lead to the end game and save us all from World War III, which would be nice.